Hi, my name's Rob Cross. I'm Program Manager Biodiversity for Carpentry Coast District Council. One of the really cool things about my job is I get to look after places like this, which is Russell Reserve in Waikanae. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing place, it's a remnant of the old native forest that was typical of the Waikanae and Kapiti Coast area. And at the moment, one of the real natural wonders of the district is happening. It happens every four or five years in local native forests, and it's the flowering of cocoa trees, like the one behind me. And as you can see, this cocoa tree, a big old tree, probably a couple of hundred years old, is completely covered in flowers which are uh, coming off stems that are growing straight out of the trunk. And that's a really unusual feature. In fact, there's really only one tree in New Zealand that does this, and it's the cocoa tree. It's a feature of subtropical trees, uh, and cocoa is uh, the only member of the subtropical uh, Dysox Island family. Uh, that's growing in New Zealand. A feature of these trees that they flower like this with uh, profuse flower stems, hundreds and hundreds of them growing out of the tree. It happens, it seems, only every four or five years because the climate has to be right. Now these flowers are really important to local native birds and standing here at the moment, although we're in um, suburban Waikanae, it's almost like being on Kapiti Island because there are so many uh, tui and bellbird singing. And they're singing because they're feeding on the nectar from these flowers, uh, because it's the start of their courtship season. And having all this nectar to feed on means they only need to feed for a short time and then they can sing and the males can sing and try and attract mates. One of the reasons we're getting such a fantastic cocoa flowering in forests like these is that we're controlling the pest animals here. Possums eat these flowers even before they, they open. So we're controlling the possums in local forest remnants and we're also controlling the rats. Uh, rats don't bother the flowers, but when the fruit appears a year later and opens, and that's another really important food source for the birds, is the, is the fruit, the seeds, uh, the rats eat those. So we're getting great flowering, which means our pest control is really paying off. Koi koi trees are a real feature of the Kapiti Coast. They're the dominant tree um, of the uh, local native forest, the dominant canopy tree but we've got less than 10% of our uh, original native vegetation left and only a tiny fraction of the koi koi forest that used to grow here. It's probably the only place in New Zealand that has this many koi koi trees growing in an urban area. So to be able to come to a reserve like this or to Weeparata Reserve or Motuiti Reserve or Barry Hadfield Nikau Scenic Reserve and see koi koi in flower and hear this amazing bird song is really quite a special thing and you don't, uh, you don't get to do that anywhere else in New Zealand and I really encourage people to, to take the opportunity. The kaukai only flowers for two or three weeks and it might be another four or five years before we see this happening again. So I really encourage everyone uh, to visit one of our local uh, forest remnants and enjoy it.